Praise the Lord. Amen. So I was given a topic that is called the Great Locust Army. The Great Locust Army. And every time you hear about something called the locust, just know it's an invasion. It is an attack against, especially today, we are going to talk about the ladies and the women. So whatever it is, ladies or women, whatever I will use, just know I'm referring to the same. So every time we hear about the great locust army, we know that it's an attack against us. And I usually tell people that the environment we are living in in our days is highly spiritually charged. This is a warfare business. You either fight or you must fight. In a war, they don't give excuses. You don't say, for me, you fight your things. I'm not, I'm not part of them. When there is war, you either fight or you fight or you surrender and die. So in a warfare, you fight for your life. We are in a generation, especially as women, or call them ladies. In this Alabaster Ladies Conference, we need to be reminded as ladies that the so-called hiding into the whole idea of we are weak vessels. In spiritual warfare, those terms don't operate. In warfare business, there is no weak. The Bible says, I think it's in Joel chapter 3 and verse 10, that let even the weak say that I am strong. In a spiritual warfare, you must fight. You have to fight. It's mandatory upon you to fight. I want to let you know that everything is interested in the ladies. Everything, including me. Everything is interested in something called the ladies. I cannot imagine having lived with women in this world, assuming a voice comes from heaven and it says, I'm taking all the women and for a while, for some years, sparing the men to remain on, on the earth. I would ask God to take me with them. The rest of the men will find me there when I'm living with them. Because I cannot imagine a world Without women, it would be a very ugly world. Very ugly. It is ladies that makes the world so beautiful for us. That's why everything is interested in the women, in the ladies. You know, when people are announcing um, all these other street kadankes and what, and all these other discos and all these other things, who are the people they front to advertise for what they are advertising for? They are the ladies. If anyone wants to produce anything, you know what these days, even the videos in music in Uganda, they will front the ladies, they are nude, they are skimpy. Why? Because it, they are very attractive. Ladies are like music. Music is pleasurable. Sometimes when it is played, you find yourself dancing, even when you don't wish to dance. So, my dear friends, we are in a warfare. Especially you, the ladies that have understood Jesus. This is a warfare business. There is a greater call upon you to mother this world. Now, in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 20, this is what the Bible says. Adam named his wife Eve. Eve in Hebrew is Hawa. Hawa means a mother. A mother of all the living. Because the Bible continues there. Because she would become the mother of all the living. The same thing was not declared upon Adam. That he would be the father of all the living. But it was declared upon Eve. That Eve would be the, the mother of all the living. So the devil hates that. That's why he will do everything that he can in, in his means. To attack a woman because they don't want you to mother the world because it is through you that everything derives a living because it was declared by the Lord so every lady and every woman is a mother of not just your children but of all the living every street child you are a mother to them 
Every disabled child, you are a mother to them. Every crazy man, you are a mother to them. Every responsible human being, you are a mother to them. Every prostitute, you are a mother to them. Every goat, every hen, every cow, you are a mother to them. Because it is declared in this scripture, you are the mother to all the living. Not just a mother to your biological children. And generations have gone by when you read in the Bible. Every time God wants to usher a blessing to a certain generation, he picks on a woman. And then gets somebody like Moses. They say a Hebrew man. The story of Moses is even amazing. They say a Hebrew man met with a Hebrew woman and then they gave birth to Moses. The story of Moses' father ends at the father meeting the mother. And that was it. The rest of the other stories we are hearing, the mother, and then, and then, and then made a basket, and then puts Moses on the river. And, and who does the nurturing and the mentorship and the monitoring? It is the mother and not Moses' brother, but Moses' sister. And the devil hates that. Because when a woman is soaked in God, they mother a nation. They mentor us. So the devil fights that. And we are not ready to be fought. We are also warriors. We shall fight back. Tell your neighbor, for this Alabaster Ladies Conference, I'm not a weak vessel. No, that one is boring. It will make a bad evening for you. Speak to somebody else. Praise the Lord. We are not weak vessels. We are mothers of all the living. In 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 5, Paul, wrote, Paul, Paul writes to Timothy and tells Timothy, I'm reminded of the faith that was in your grandmother, Lois. And the same faith was passed on to your mother, Eunice. And he says, I'm very persuaded. This is the same faith that you, Timothy, are operating in. In that lineage, where do you see a man? In that scripture. That is 2 Timothy 1.5. I'm reminded of the faith that was in your... Because it is always assumed that it is men that bless the children, isn't it? You know, it is, you, 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 you are father. You know, it is so much mentioned, Abraham passed on the blessing. Yes, the men have a blessing to pass on. The women have a blessing to pass on. That blessing, you should fight for it. It is not attained on a red carpet. Paul writes and says, you woman, you lady, you alabaster lady, I'm reminded, there is the faith that was in your grandmother, Lois. That faith followed your mother, Eunice. Now I know you, Timothy, when I look at you, this same faith is in you. And the devil always fights to kill that in a woman. For you to think you've got nothing to pass on. Now, when we talk about the great locust army, every time the enemy rises an army to attack you, he's attacking the seed of faith that God has sowed in your life, that God has deposited in you. And yet that faith has to be passed on so we have business to do, ladies. You have faith to pass on. You have faith to pass on to your children and your children's children. Finally, there is a scripture in Genesis chapter 49 and verse 25. When Jacob was blessing his children, he blessed his children differently. But when it came to blessing Joseph, he said... I declare on you the blessing of the breasts and the blessing of the womb. That is in Genesis chapter 49 and verse 25. He says, you Joseph, you are not just only going to have your father. Actually, he declared, he says, the Lord of your father, the blessing of the God of your father, 
the blessing of your father, then the blessing of the womb, and the blessing of the breasts. So breastfeeding is serious business. It is not for satisfaction. It is not for the child to get satisfied. There is a woman, every time they breastfeed, they are passing on a blessing. This is not about the child getting satisfied to sleep. I've, when I read this scripture, we had our boy who is now in middle class during COVID time. But you know, sometimes I would look at my wife breastfeeding and sometimes I feel these guys have a deal that they are trying to, to negotiate without me. You know when a child is breastfeeding, the way they look is straight into the eye of the mother. And they are not even blinking. Eh? And then this Rachel, my wife, busy talking to this Sean, my little boy. The words that are supposed to be directed to me are being directed to the little boy. You know, and then he's busy there. Oh, my, my, my Sean, uh, my love, uh, my boy, uh, you a prophet, uh, you are my king. And then I'm like, what? Jealous. Yes, some little jealous of the little boy. Said, no, I'm supposed to be enjoying that. I want to tell you, you women have a blessing to pass on. Just help me preach to somebody seated next to you and say, woman, you have a blessing to pass on. <laughs> Jacob prays and says, the blessing of the womb and the blessing of the breasts. Now, just imagine... Greetings to all women when you're breastfeeding, you have mastered the skill of slapping these little ones in the name of their... Why are you biting me? Now this, my friend, you don't know what you're passing on. You don't know what you're passing on. It is the blessing that God deposited in you. It's being sucked out of you. Men don't have that opportunity. To have anything anyone can suck called a blessing out of us. The ladies have an opportunity for somebody to directly, according to the scripture, suck a blessing out of you. Now the question is, why wouldn't the devil fight you? Why would the devil spare you? Why wouldn't you be fought by every problem in this world? Because for you, it does not even take intercessions. It doesn't even take prayers. It takes knowledge of the word of God to know that when I'm breastfeeding, I'm passing on a blessing. For us, it takes us to pray and lay hands. For you, it takes just to get someone and they breastfeed. Now, if you're not breastfeeding anybody, at least someone breastfed you. So there is something that was passed on. So my question is, why wouldn't the devil fight you? Now, I'm also going to say this, but no further questions when I say it. Now, I want to tell you, to my test, there is nothing at all that is sweet about the breast milk. Don't tell me where I found it. But somehow, I've ever tested it. For further questions, they will give you my phone. You will call and ask, Reverend, where did you test the breast milk from? I've ever tested. Because I kept on wondering, how comes that even when you're trying to make the child stop breastfeeding, you have to put, you know, you have to put bitter things, you have to... At least be away for days from this child. The child cannot leave the breast. And sometimes I wondered, is it sweet? Is it salty? Is it what? There is nothing tasty about it. Completely nothing. At least for me, I can represent you men. I had an opportunity to test it. Where I tested it from is none of public business. 
is more of your call to me and you ask me how did you and then that's when I will narrate the story nothing testy about it but a lot of blessings about it and I think sometimes children detect that this is not just satisfaction business why wouldn't the enemy fight you why wouldn't an army rise up against you because you have something about you that the enemy needs a copy of so dear friends this is a war you have a call to mother the nation you have a call to fight you have a call of mentorship when when my father died and my mother died before they died i was handed over to my paternal auntie to raise me as a real man and he said it is saying that deborah you know, it is Auntie Deborah who will raise you as a, as a responsible man, as a real man. And you know the way she made me work down in the village. The way she would make me like, the way she shaped me and mentored me to be a man that I am. So hardworking. So hardworking. No business of pampering. Because she knew she was raising a man. I didn't know what they had talked about with my father. But when I was still young, because my dad died when I was in, uh, in primary five, my dad talked to her and told her, this young man will inherit me. So make sure you raise him as a responsible man. Make sure that you will take care of the brothers. You will fear God. He will, he will have a heart to serve God. He will do everything that I need from him. And guess what? It is my auntie. Who, not, who raised me into hard work, into discipline. I knelt down in Buganda here, kneeling is okay when you are greeting, but it's not typical of men to kneel up to old age. I knelt down until my auntie told me, stop, now you have grown. Disciplining me to be the kind of a man that I would be. That's why. Some of us who were raised like this, whereas others are overconsumed by the egoism of men. For me, it is easy to kneel down and say, Rachel Munange, on a serious note. Uh, I'm sorry. Because I've grown up used to the business. That's why we are true worshippers as well, because kneeling is easy for us. The whole business of, ah, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a man, man. Yeah, I'm not a man. That's why even when my parents died, I cried a lot. So my tears were wiped away. I have time to comfort others because I poured out a lot. This business of a man doesn't cry. Why? Why wouldn't a man cry? Like it is written where that thou man shall not cry. Me, I cried properly. And for us who grew up in the village... Like we cry in our local language. We don't cry in English. That's why we ha God has helped us to comfort others. Because we know how to cry. You know how they cry locally. In Buganda here, I don't know about your cultures. In Buganda here, when you are crying, you cry while telling the story. You don't cry like quiet. Uh -uh. When you're crying, you begin. Munange nabadao. Umana nankeda ningamba. Iiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiii
And so I want to mention some other few things. I'm trying to watch my time, and I know I'll keep it well. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I ask these guys to come on their microphones. Lift up your hands and say, Dear Jesus, I will fight this war against me. I'll fight every army that rises up against me. I'll do everything I can do as a woman, as a lady, to live to the honor and glory of your name. I'll never be defeated. I have a seed of blessing in me. I have something to pass on. In the name of Jesus, I have something to pass on to my children, to my children's children. This generation awaits for a blessing that comes from me unto them. I am your child, Jesus. Do not leave me in this conference. Help me know that you have deposited a lot inside me that the world awaits for that the world needs that the world should test and know that you are the Lord we give you praise Jesus we give you glory Jesus we honor you Jehovah Holy Spirit of God my standing here is not about the invitation. It's not about even what I studied in theology and mastered to do. I desire that Holy Spirit, you give me a sense of direction to know how to speak and what to speak to your children. They cannot spare and sacrifice everything to come here just to watch me. No, they need your presence. They need your divine intervention. Speak to all of us today. The Alabaster Ladies Conference. I speak to everybody here. May we partake of the blessing of the wombs. Where we came from. May we partake of the blessing of the breasts. That we sucked. And may the same happen to those we are mentoring. And nurturing. In the name of Jesus. Yes, we are mothers of the nation. We give you glory, Jesus. We are persuaded the seed of faith is pursuing us from the mothers of this generation, from the women that beguard us. We give you glory, Jesus. We give you glory, Jesus. My soul says yes. Says yes. Says yes, my soul says yes, says yes to your will. Can you sing with me? My soul, oh my soul says yes. Just lift up your voice.
lift up your voice wherever you are. Sing to Jesus. Just lift up your voice. He says yes. My soul says yes. Trying to manage my time. 
the great locust in Joel chapter 2 and verse 25 I shall restore unto you the years that the locust the great locust the young locust the other locust and the great locust worm swarm have eaten I told you most of the times you hear about the word the great army of locusts this is what God is trying to say one God allows the enemy to arise number one to discipline us because we may have gone astray but also God sometimes allows the enemy to arise in order to demonstrate what they call his power against the enemy so every time we have an attack as ladies as women of virtue valor destiny and substance there is not true that as a woman as a lady that every battle that rises up against you it's for purposes of putting you down the bible says gloat not over me my enemy because when i fall i rise up again true ladies don't fall forever true ladies true alabaster ladies when they fall they pick themselves up and they rise up on their feet again so my prayer tonight is that from now and onwards i know the conference is still going on isn't it and many people that will stand here i am here to let you know that let this be a season of god demonstrating his power through your life that whatever you thought had defeated you it has never tried to defeat you you defeated it praise the lord that's my point number one my point number two i desire for you to be reminded of the word alabaster i believe this conference was derived from the fact that the word alabaster symbolizes giving to god the best of our treasure the best of what we can ever give to him so god deserves the best from every lady we are reminded of the scripture of a sinful woman in matthew 26 and verse 7 and mark chapter 14 and verse 3 we are reminded of those scripture and then luke chapter 7 also verse 37 these ladies the same ladies talked about others say she was mary the the, the um uh, mary 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 the sister to lazarus they say she got an expensive alabaster jar and she broke it and allowed to use this very expensive perfume to anoint the head of jesus and to anoint his feet there is an attack of a great army against the women in our times and what does the enemy want to do the enemy wants to kill a biblical legacy of the women giving their best women don't give to god what is cheap they give what is treasurable they give what is expensive because they are not cheap they are treasurable and they are expensive i usually i usually tell guys who have not yet married if you don't have an investing mentality don't try anyone's daughter a lady at whatever level you're on you must invest in her whether your level is a level of guavas if guavas is the most valuable thing it's the most valuable that you should invest in her to get a lady on your side it's a matter of investment because glamour and beauty and magnificence on them doesn't come just on a red carpet when you look at other people's ladies and admire them people have paid the price of investing in them to look beautiful to look good when i was in my premarital counseling they told me esmond if you love rachel you must invest in her secondly they told me a pastor's wife is not supposed to look ugly I will never allow my wife to look ugly. Do you know 
what it means to come and your preacher invited in all sense and you you you're not seeing me me I'm watching all of you because I'm standing here on the pulpit do you know what it means to look at all these beautiful ladies of all sense only to go back home to look at yours you begin interceding to say god what befell my home that is not allowed that's why pastors wives are beautiful because I'm supposed to have a beautiful thing at home to settle and get focused when I'm preaching. So never forget you are treasurable. And so this ladies alabaster conference should remind you you're not cheap and you're not supposed to give what is cheap to God. You are treasured and you're supposed to give what is treasurable to God. No woman who understands things like you do underestimates the power of their value and does not understand that what is best is what they are supposed to give. Every time you look at yourself and you test yourself and examine yourself when what you're giving to God is not the best don't try to give it out because it is the best. Have you seen women they will sacrifice anything for their children. They will do anything for the people that they love. That's why they told us in counseling psychology that women, when they are loving, they process the love. Their love is processed. That thing that you say that they are no is a yes, it is not true. They are no is a no. But while they are saying they are not, they are processing you. Theirs is a process. Sometimes they'll look at you and they will see something about you that will either protect them like the daddy protected them or will provide for them like the uncle did. And they go like, I think Esmond will work out. Theirs is not a trigger. Theirs is just, it's a process. That's why even when there is a separation, they are most hurt because the way they processed when they were loving is the same way they process when they are quitting. Now, for us men, this is what happened. We have even something that is called infatuation. Infatuation means if at a particular time I bump into a lady to satisfy the sexual urge I feel even when I don't love them I can have a sexual relationship with them but that doesn't mean I don't have the real Rachel that I love you have just fallen like the, the, these days this the, the Genesis say a good demogapuzang <laughs> you land into my gap, it happens, and after that, I don't need you anymore. Ladies, don't do that. For us, seeing is believing, and our love is compartmental in nature. Like every man has this other thing that is attractive about ladies that they love about them. Others' hair, others' the hips, others' the legs, others' the eyes. Sometimes we are in our discussions and we are like, Nayogundi. For them, they are compartmental. He says, so The eyes are everything. The eyes define everything. So, as you're busy saying, No, 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 no. But the eyes. So, men are compartmental. So, he will look at something and says, Do you know that for us, we do the last things first and the first things last? Before you ask about the character, the behaviors, the home where the lady comes from, the first thing is you're preoccupied by the beauty. Eh? Gwe. The but wait a minute. I'll, the, but the girl is beautiful. Then you begin to ask other things. Ne, where does she come from? But ladies process. So if you're a woman who does ju just does things without processing, you need deliverance. You're not supposed to be like 
for us what controls us is having Christ in us actually I usually tell people and it looks like the joke given opportunity every man is a potential adulterer every man including you yes because for us to be triggered sexually doesn't take even a minute for ladies, you have to prepare like you're leaving in the morning and then you throw a word, ah, darling, I love you. You are preparing for the evening you begin in the morning. For us, we don't need preparation. We are ready anytime. So, woman use that virtue to process. To understand that you are treasurable. The same way you should process yourself. To give to God what is best. To give to God what is best. So this attack against women should be fought seriously. Jeremiah chapter 31. Which I want to end with. Jeremiah chapter 31. And verse 15 to 20. The Bible says that this is what the Lord says. A voice is heard in Rama. Rachel moaning. And great weeping for her children. And refusing to be comforted. Because her children are no more. Women. Until your family is okay. Until your children are okay. Until the people God has called you to mother are okay. You in the spiritual realm. Women don't accept to be comforted until everything they feel is supposed to be okay is okay. You don't tell them it is well until they feel it is well. The Bible says Rachel refuses to be comforted. She says an attack on my children don't comfort me until they are safe until God came with a promise he says for sure I will comfort you in Jerusalem for sure I will do this for you as a woman of virtue as an alabaster treasurable woman God comes with a promise and he says he shall restore unto you the great locust worm is about fighting a great war of what advances against us for restoration we must be restored to where we belong. And we must cry for restoration. It doesn't come any easily. I am here to speak to you, child of God. That you have a lot that God has entrusted you with. And you have a lot to give out. There is a lot in you. If you've never discovered it, we are craving for it. We want it. We need it. Because you are the mother of all the living. I want to pray that it shall be said of you that we are reminded of a seed of faith that was in your name. Mention your name. The seed of faith that was in your... One day you'll be a grandmother. So even if you avoid those things, you will. Tell your neighbor, you'll grow old one time, whether you want it or not. Some reminded of the faith that was in your grandmother. Mention your name. Your grandmother... And your mother now mention your daughter. If you don't have one, you'll have one in the future. Just mention any name. And your daughter. And now the same faith is in. Generations are awaiting for the seed of faith and blessing. That will come from you. That's enough for today. Let's rise up on our feet. Bible says Rachel moans and weeps and cries and she refuses to be comforted until her children are okay woman you're supposed to be restless if you can still see prostitutes in Kampala you are supposed to be restless if you can still see men advertising themselves if a woman comes with a car with a, with a house 
uh, uh, I'll shower them with love. I'm ready. If it is men advertising themselves for women to find them, woman, you should not be quiet. Just look at your children. What blessing did they suck from you? Just look at your generation and systems that have raised you. Is there any seed of faith that you see in your four grandmother and your mother and now the same seed of faith? There is not any family that was predestined for only curses. It does not exist. Somewhere, somehow, there is a seed of faith that pursues you that you need to be revealed to that this is the seed of faith there are moments you need to get into a closet and pray and say God I am a woman a woman from whom a seed of faith is supposed to pursue others and this is not a joke it is a warfare you cry for it you grieve for it I don't have an experience of carrying somebody nine months in my womb. I don't know what it feels. I don't know how it feels at month one, month two, month three, month nine. I was close to my wife when she was giving birth. I went even in the labor suit because they were pushing me away. No, 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 no. You're supposed to stay there. I say, I'll only stay away when one person says so. Rachel. And they asked Rachel, Rachel, what man, should your husband be around? She said, yes. I told them, you see, I told you. I came and stayed around. I saw the pain. Like I physically saw her pushing. And I and 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 I said, friends, a mixture of my tears and the joy of seeing my baby popping out. And my dear, you do not have any idea of who you are. You're such a great treasure. Do you know what it means to usher life on earth? Never allow the devil to put you down. To even make you think low of yourself. Alabaster means something treasurable. That's what this conference is about. It's about that God treasured us, deposited what is treasurable in us, and it is treasure that we're supposed to pass on. That's why when Rachel saw Israel going into the Babylonian exile, when Rachel saw Israel, the Bible doesn't say Jacob. It says Rachel is grieving. Rachel is moaning and crying. And somebody came and comforted her saying, Rachel, stop crying. She says, I don't stop crying until my children are fine. That is a heart a woman should carry. You were mother of all the living. You don't have to have given birth to have such a heart. Mothers become mothers before they give birth to any child. A mother is mentored. A mother is nurtured. A mother is raised. A mother is groomed. A mother is born. A mother doesn't become one the day they push a baby out. All creation awaits for the seed of faith and blessing God deposited in you. You have to release it to us. You have to know that you have it. If you don't have it, you have to seek for it. You have to crave for it. You have to cry for it. And that's how God formed you. And you have nothing to do about it other than to fight for it lift up your hands and say dear Jesus I'll fight this war I refuse to be comforted until it is all well with me until it is all well with my family until it is well with my soul until it is well with my spirit until it is well with the children of my nation until it is well with the children of my motherland until it is well with the children of my cradle land it is I will refuse to be comforted until you hear my voice your prayer today is God until you hear my voice I refuse to be comforted until you hear me out
until you answer me out I speak to the people that are online I'm speaking to you as well you're watching us online and I speak to you no woman should rest until your soul is well until your spirit is well until your children are well until it is all well mother of the living you are a mother of all the living he knows my name he knows every thought lift up your voice he sees each tear that falls and hears me when I call. He knows, he knows my name. He knows my name. He knows my every thought. He knows my every thought. Come 
voice. I don't know whether you feel what I feel right now. Just cry to God. Just grieve to God. That's what Alabaster Conference is about. We pour it all out to God. Come on, somebody. We have a few minutes here. Lift up your voice to Jesus. And tell him, God, I am here. I am here, Jesus. I am here. Lift up your voice to Jesus. Lift up your voice to Jesus. Lift up your voice to Jesus. Your voice is hard. Your voice is hard. Let the words in your ear be loud. Shatai alabo bobo, sikabo bobo. to Jesus. Wherever you are, your voice is heard. God is listening to you right now. God is hearing you out. Maybe nobody has listened to you. Maybe nobody has heard you. Like Hagar, he should cry to God and say, God, can you hear me? Can you hear me right now? Can you hear me out, Jesus? God is hearing you. God has heard your voice. God is listening to you right now. In the name of Jesus, He turns your mourning into dancing right now. Tears may linger in the night, but joy comes in the morning. We are that alabaster ladies. We are here for you, Jesus. We pour out our hearts to you. We pour out our souls to you. Speak to God. Tell it all to Him. Tell Him about your family. Tell him about your relationship. Tell him about your job. Tell him about your frustrations. Tell him about your deepest pains. We give you praise. We give you glory, Jesus. Now listen to me, friends. In just a few minutes. In just a few minutes. I don't know what you're going through. But I'm reminded of Hannah. She walks her footsteps and she says, I'll go and cry before my God. Woman, who knows that you know that nobody knows what you're going through. There is the most beautiful moment where you can come and pour out what you feel. And that is nowhere other than in the presence of God. I want to make an invitation right now. This time, this is the conviction I feel at heart. It's not necessarily an invitation of giving your life to Christ. No, 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 I know other people will do that. I am here to let you know. Woman, you cannot come this evening and walk back with those tears, with that pain, with that misery, with that frustration. You cannot be comforted until God comforts you enough until it is well never comfort yourself that it is well until you feel that it is well I want to ask you just if you can I know this place cannot be enough for us but for some of you that can take a step and you want to pour out your heart to the Lord I don't know whether you stand in the aisle whether you come and kneel here but just take a step of faith just to tell him God I want to surrender it all at the cross and if you're in that category just come and we cry to Jesus come and we weep before our father to tell him Lord we can't go back the way we came with what we came with oh I surrender all to you. You're not before me. I give to you. I surrender. I surrender all to you. Everything I give to you. Everything I give.
begin to speak to God right now. Just begin to speak to God right now. I don't know what to feel. I don't know how you feel. begin to pray let's have the keyboard softly pray softly play the keyboard and the instruments as we cry to God just speak to God just speak to Jesus just lift up your voice to him just release yourself to Jesus even those who are remaining over there it's not about these ones that are here it is also about you you cannot remain silent you cannot keep quiet. You have a seed of faith that God deposited in you. The time is now. No more days of sorrow. No more days of darkness. No more days of attacks. Every attack of the enemy against you. Every locust one. Every western years. Some of you have a lot to regret about. You don't know why you made that decision. You don't know why you decided what you decided. You don't know why you took the path you took. You don't know why you did everything that you did. I am here to let you know the presence of Jesus is here. The glory of God is here. The anointing of God is here. You are before your Father. He's here for you. You, he, 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 you are the reason He's here. You are the reason He has visited us. Your voice is heard. A voice of Rachel is heard. A voice of your name is heard. A voice is heard. Your voice is heard. Your voice is heard. Your voice is heard. Your voice is heard. A voice. A voice of a woman is heard. A domosi yoli wuliwa. A domosi yoli wuliwa. A domosi yoli wuliwa. Tell him I refuse to be comforted, God. Until you do something about my situation. I refuse to be comforted. I refuse to be comforted. Until you do something about my situation. Until you redeem my life. Until you rescue me. Until you deliver me. Until you surround me with your grace. Yes. Your voice is heard. I speak to every child of God. Your voice is heard. Upon you I release the blessing of the breasts of your mother. Upon you I release the blessing of the womb from where you came from. Upon you mothers that are here. I release your blessing of your wombs upon your children i release the blessing of your wombs upon your children release that blessing to your children if you're a mother here release it to them the blessing of your womb i release it upon your children that are sick that are weak that are struggling that you don't understand the blessing of your breasts the blessing of your breasts released upon you and released upon your children. Spirit move over me. Spirit move of me. Spirit move. Spirit move of me. Spirit move. Spirit move of me. Wherever you 
Now hold your hands in your chest and tell him, God, I am just a woman. I'm just a man who seeks for the blessing. A mother, a blessing from you, everybody, wherever you are. You tell him, I will never be comforted. I refuse to be comforted and I will not silent. I will not be silent. I will not be and never be silent until your glory shines, until your presence shines, until your goodness shines, until your power shines, until your grace is manifested, until your goodness is seen. I will not be quiet until my relationship works out. I will not be quiet until everything that you've promised comes to pass. Just speak to God and tell him, I'm not cheap. I'm not small. I am a woman of virtue. I am a woman of valor. I am a woman of destiny. I am a woman of substance. You establish my feet on the rock. You establish my going. A new song on my lips shall I sing. A song that glorifies God. We give you praise, Jesus. We honor you, Jehovah. 